H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So how to handle frames uh, in WebDriver? So you guys, uh, I, so the what frames is uh, in web application is there might be three uh, different stuff happening in the application separately. So in, in, in certain scenario, if we have to do any actions in specific place, we have to switch to that iframe to do any actions. So in order to switch to the iframe, we have different way of doing it depending on how developers code it. The different ways of doing it is we can switch it using the name of the frame or the index, say for example in the index of the frame, uh, etc, etc. So we have different ways to do that. So the different ways, is the first one is switching using, using the ID of the frame. Uh, we have to use switch to driver dot switch to dot frame uh, say the ID, the iframe ID and you have to pass it here. So this will make the web driver to switch to the specific iframe and from once it is switched and then you can do whatever actions. If you are not, if you are not, if you ask me what happens if you are not using switch to frame, it doesn't do any actions. Uh, it, it, this, the web driver script will fail if you are not using a switch. We have to switch to the iframe to do any action. So we have to use this method, uh, this syntax to switch to the frame. The another way of doing it is using the tag name and index. Say for example in the page if we have four iframe, the first iframe index will be zero, the second one will be one and two and three. So if you want to switch to, if you know, if it is an order and if you know which iframe you wanted to switch it, you can just pass the index number of the iframe so it will switch to the specific iframe. Say for this in the scenario of this third iframe, you can just pass the ID of the iframe here. And name. And the last one is what it does is, say for example, you have switched from one frame to the other frame and if you wanted to go to the original, original page or original iframe, you have to use uh, switch to default content which makes the web driver focus to the default content. Um, any questions with respect to iframe? Okay. So how do we handle a pop-up, web pop-up, web-based pop-up in web driver? Uh, any guess? Um, okay. Uh, um, it just sorry. Go ahead, Sangeeta. No, no, I'm not recollecting. Not able to be collected. Sorry. <laughs> that, that that's fine. I mean, um, so it's just the same. What the switch to does? Let's take a previous example. What switch to does? Does is we have different iframes part of application, right? So we are jumping from one iframe to different iframe, correct? So in order to jump to the different iframe, we are using switch to, right? switch to iframe and the ID of the iframe or whatever a finder we are using. So it's the same thing in pop-up to just use switch to color. So instead of iframe, we are using color. It's just the same concept. I and mean, you can just visualize it's the same concept. Once we are switching into the specific color, uh, we just need to use, if you have to select OK button, we just need to use alert.accept or something like that. Um, so there, are, there might be a few scenarios where single click doesn't trigger any action in the web application and there might be a requirement where we need to double click on specific elements, you know. Um, so do you guys know how to do it? Have you ever came across? this function scenario? No. Okay. 
Uh, this is also a very important uh, or interesting question people might ask. So the double click can be done through a class called actions class. So we need to call the actions class to trigger. So it's a specific class. How we call the classes using actions and define an object or name for that object and declare it. And we use act and using this class we just double click on the specific element whatever we want it to. So, and uh, we can use actions class for other purpose too. For example, using actions class since we, uh, this is also one of the main questions or major questions people ask in the interview is a drag and drop. How do you guys do drag and drop? Because most of the web application, modern web application has a drag and drop functionality uh, or which requires mouse actions like click on here and click on uh, some place depending on uh, X and Y coordinates of the scenario. For example, uh, we have flash application or some captcha or something like that. If we know that the captcha is going to display the specific place in the application, we can just take the x, y coordinate of the screen and just take a, use our mouse and go and click it. So in order to do trigger all the mouse actions, we have to use actions class. So the, the few examples of actions class are drag and drop, drag and drop based on x and y coordinates uh, and selecting a jQuery item and uh, if j and select sliding using jQuery and resizing an element and in, in chart all the most actions can be done to actions class. This is very very important uh, questions you just need to remember. So if you have to, if you don't have much idea about the drag and drop probably you guys can uh, you know Google and read something about the drag and drop functionality or actions class which will be really helpful for your projects too. Um, so uh, in a web driver, exception handling is a very, very important one. So we have to handle web driver, I mean exception handling like using try, catch in Java. So we use try, catch, uh, to catch all the exceptions. So if someone asks you uh, in the interview, like, what are the web driver exceptions or exceptions you have come across during Selenium web driver testing? Um, can you give, can you guys give me one example of exception you are facing your project? Null pointer exception. Okay, yeah, that that's a that's a good example. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, in the web application, if we are when we are creating the application, we are using some ID. There are a lot of chances because most of the applications are evolving, and people just go and update here and there. And if, if it is huge, they will, a huge team, and there are a lot of chances the ID gets changed or something like that. So in that scenario, in in our script, if you are using specific ID, and if it's been changed when we are running it. It will, it, it will throw no such element because the element is not there because there is a change in the application. So in that scenario, the Selenium web driver will throw no such element exception. So there are few other exceptions too. You can just go over. Say for example, we uh, we wanted to click on um, home page uh, or like button in the Facebook home page. So before that, our scenario used to enter user ID and password and click login button. And the maximum time limit we give for uh, wait time is say 10 seconds. If the application takes more than 10 seconds, obviously uh, the next step will fail because the application is still loading. So in this scenario, we will throw it, the Selenium web driver will throw timeout exceptions. Uh, I guess we already covered no such element exceptions, and uh, no other pre present exception is the obvious one. Uh, and if, and if your script is using, uh, the script is trying to select an element or checkbox, and if the element is not is not in selectable condition for some some reason, like it might be a bug, or there's 
for some reason it is not selectable, then you can throw element not selectable exception. And sometimes there are a lot of chances like the element might be in the DOM, but it is not visible in that scenario, it will throw element not visible exception. These are some sample ex exceptions. We have few more exceptions too, like stale element exceptions, those, those kind of stuff. But majority of, majority of the exception would be related to no such element exception or timeout exceptions. These two are very important. So, And, and one more thing, it's totally different from the questions what we are discussing about. Uh, we, we, in our project, we need to really make sure that we are using some kind of exception handling. Uh, you, in Java, uh, we, uh, we, we have to use try, try catch or something like that to catch the exception so that it doesn't affect our execution flow. Okay. But do you guys have any questions so far? Okay. We'll move on to the next question. 